Hey, I'm Ann Riley Caldwell, not your ordinary agent, and I'm so excited. I am here to be your coach, to be your mentor, to be your confidant, to be your consultant, and to help you every step of the way to make sure that you get from I want to own a home to celebrating at your closing. I can't wait. I'm so excited. I love using my legal and financial background in order to help buyers navigate the jungle or whatever you would like to call the process of home buying. And that's why I'm here so that I can partner with you. I can consult with you. I can get your questions answered. I can make sure that all the parties throughout the process are on the same page. And what we're going to do today is just do a quick overview of the entire home buying process from the time that we first talk until the time you get your keys at closing and we get to celebrate you in your new home because that is the goal. So when it comes to the home buying process, there are a number of steps. The very first one is to talk to a real estate agent. Oh, that would be me and Riley Caldwell, not your ordinary agent. But the first step is to talk to me so that I can get your desires, your wants. I love to know the why behind why you want to buy a home. There's some obvious reasons, but there's also unique reasons to every single person that I work with. That's one of the great things that I love about this position and being able to help people. And one of the first things I'm going to do is sort of give you an overview of the lending process so that when you get ready to talk to a lender to get pre-approved, which is the next step and really sort of the main first step, because until we know what type of loan you can qualify for because that makes a difference until we know the purchase price, until we know what numbers the lender used to get to that purchase price, then we can take that financial information and marry it to the real estate goals that you have, what it is that you need and want in a home, where it is that you would like to live. Um, all the real estate questions you and I are going to deal with in real time. We're going to be talking about your options. We're going to talk about where you want to live, uh, what's important to you in an area. I know the Middle Tennessee area very well. It's very diverse. Diverse. It's very different. So I definitely can help you narrow down what's going to work best for you. But we have to know what your budget, what your max purchase price is. So we can make sure that we're going to the places that are going to get you what you want at what you can afford. Because most of all, you want to be comfortable with your payment. Forget about interest rates. Forget about what's going on in the news. Forget about what the economy is doing. I mean, the main thing is we have to see if you're comfortable with your payment. That's really what matters at the end of the day and what that's going to look like and what that's going to turn into from a purchase price standpoint. So once you talk to a lender, they're going to have you fill out an application, usually online. If you need help, they can help you. They're going to ask you for certain documents. So they're going to give you a list of those. But if you would like to prepare ahead of time, a few of the things that I know that they're going to ask for, if you are an employee working for someone else, they're going to want to see your W-2s for the last couple of years. They're going to want to see the last couple of years of your tax returns. They're going to want to see your last few pay stubs. They're going to want to see the last couple of months of your bank statements. And if there's anything else that they need in order to get more information, they're going to tell you what that is. They're going to look at your credit score. They're going to look at your credit report. They're going to ask you some follow-up questions. And this is really going to continue throughout the whole process. So just expect to be updating documents, to giving them answers, to things that might come up along the way. My best advice to you is once you start this process, don't really do anything with your money out of the ordinary without talking to your lender first because things that you may not think matter, matter. You definitely don't want to go further into debt. You definitely don't want to take out more credit cards. You don't want to buy a car. You don't want to go pay off an old account because you think that might look better on your credit report. There are a lot of things in the finance side of things that seem to make common sense, but sometimes those are the things that can also hurt you. So you really want to be very specific with your lender and ask a lot of questions and let them guide you. And if it turns out that you're not quite ready to buy a new home, then they can help you put a plan into place if you need to raise your credit score, if you need to save some more money, if you need to work a little bit longer at your job, whatever it is, they're going to be able to give you very specific pieces of advice to make sure that you are truly ready and that you can get pre-approved and that when you do go under contract, that barring some unforeseen circumstance, you are going to be able to make it to closing. And that's what we really want. We don't want you to get 
get started on this journey and then have something happen along the way that we didn't know about that we should have known about ahead of time. And I talk to lenders almost every single day, staying up on the market, staying up on what's happening, what types of offers they're seeing, brainstorming with them, talking to them about what you can do, why you can do it, why you can't do it, uh, what your loan type is, helping sort of just make sure that you're understanding what they're telling you and that we're on the same page and that we're working together. So when you get ready to make an offer, which I'm going to be helping you with that purchase and sale agreement and filling that out, we are confident and comfortable that you've gotten your questions answered and that the offer that you're making is going to be successful. If the seller accepts it and we go under contract, we're going to get you those keys. Okay. The next step, once we know, you know, that you are pre-approved and what that looks like, and we have the financial questions answered, then we're going to be looking at houses first online. I'm going to be setting up a search with you or for you so that we can narrow down the areas that you want to live in. We can make sure that the houses are meeting the basic requirements that you have and the things that you want and that you need. We're going to make sure that all that fits within the financial parameters that we've talked about. And the great thing is, is that, you know, you're going to get to see a lot of homes. You're going to say no to a whole bunch of them, but hopefully there's going to be a handful that you're going to want to actually go out and look at in person. So when that happens, you're going to let me know. We're going to talk about it. I'm going to set up what's called a showing. So at that point, we're just finding a day and time that works for us on our side and then also works for the seller to be able to be out of their house if it's not vacant in order for us to be able to go see it. And most of the time when there aren't other people there seeing it also, there are occasions where they allow multiple people in to see the home at the same time, but that is not the norm. So basically we're navigating schedules uh, when it comes to actually trying to set up a showing. So those are the things that I take care of and do and work with you to make sure that we're getting into seeing as many of the houses as makes sense for you to see. And then at that point, we're talking about the pros and cons of each one. If we're seeing multiple houses, then we're helping you get the answers to questions that you may have so that I can help you decide which house stays on your yes, maybe list and which house are no's. And we ultimately narrow it down until we find a home that you want to make an offer on. So the next step in the process is making an offer on a home. So this is where there are documents that I will walk through with you. The seller should be providing certain documents like a property disclosure. They should be providing a confirmation of agency so that we know who everyone's agent is and who's representing who in the transaction. We should have all the information that we need to fill out the document called a purchase and sale agreement. This is the key document. Whenever possible, I like to go through this with you in advance so that there are key things in there that you already know, you already understand, we've already answered those questions. We've looked at relevant things that are in that purchase and sale agreement while we're actually at the property and answered any questions that need to be, any discussions that I need to have with the listing agent that they can have with the seller to make sure that we're on the same page. And then we start filling out blanks in this document um, everything from the purchase price that you're offering to how much earnest money you're going to put down, which I'll explain that in a second. You know, if there's any closing costs that you're asking for, who's paying title, there's just to know if you're doing a home inspection, what types of home inspections, how long you have to do a home inspection, if you're waiving a home inspection, if you're doing it past fail. I mean, there's just a number of things, which again, you don't have to understand or know all of this right now, because I will walk you through it in the process. But there are things that we will have already talked about so that when you get ready to write an offer, we're pretty much just confirming that, you know, what we had already discussed is what you want to do on this particular property. And sometimes you do something slightly different based on the market, based on the property, based on if there's multiple offers. And again, those are all things that we will talk about in the moment. But making the offer, um, we're going to fill out the purchase and sale agreement. I'm going to send it to the listing agent. Listing agent's going to present it to the seller. And then the seller is going to come back and either accept your offer as you make it and agree to everything that you offered. They're going to come back and potentially counter, which means they liked almost all of it, but there's something about it that they want to come back and see if you will agree to, or they're going
going to reject it, which means they didn't like it and they don't even want to talk about it. And that happens sometimes, especially in multiple offer situations where they can only take one offer. There's going to be a lot of no's and um, you know, you could be one of them, but our job is to do the best that we can to create the offer that you are most comfortable with, that you feel the best about, that you're going to be happy with when it's all said and done, if it gets accepted. And if it doesn't get accepted, you know that you made your best offer and that house just wasn't the one for you. And occasionally deals fall out and that house could come back around. So we might be making an offer on it later on, but you know, we don't know. So then once the offer goes out, we go through that negotiation process. And if we get to the point where both sides agree, then we go under contract. Yeah contract. That's the goal is the contract. So once we go under contract, there are a number of things that kick in. Um, I tell people the first seven to 10 days after you go under contract, you're really busy. You're answering more lender questions. We're setting up potentially home inspections. Uh, we're talking through a number of things. You're putting down your earnest money deposit. There's a lot that happens in those first seven to 10 days. And then things kind of go quiet for about 10 to 14 days. People are working in the background, but it isn't so much you having to do anything or talk to anybody or provide more documentation. And then as we move through the process, then all of a sudden the last seven to 10 days get sort of busy again. So don't worry. There is a period of time in most transactions where things are a little bit quiet and that's usually a good thing. So earnest money, I've talked about that a couple times. So one of the things that you do once you go under contract is as part of the contract, you are agreeing to put down some amount of money as sort of an upfront deposit, basically a good faith deposit that just says, I have some money and I'm putting it up and it's just part of the whole transaction process. That number is negotiable. Uh, for some people, it can be as low as a couple hundred dollars or $500 or a thousand dollars. There is no real norm, but a lot of sellers kind of want 1% of the purchase price. So those are all things that we talk about, you know, given your circumstances, if the seller seems to care. Again, there's a lot that's negotiable and earnest money is one of them. But within a certain number of days of going under contract, you're going to give that money to a company that is going to hold that money in what's called an escrow account, which is a separate account. They cannot touch it to run their business. They cannot pay their bills with it. It's in a safe place and they're just going to hold on to it. If for any reason during the transaction, there is a reason for you to get out of the deal for inspections or for some other things uh, that are contractually allowed for the parties to part ways, um, under a lot of circumstances, if the deal falls apart, you will end up getting that earnest money back. If for any reason you don't move forward because of something that is not contractually allowed or there are certain stipulations or things that we agreed to that under certain circumstances you would forfeit that earnest money, there is a small chance um, that the seller would get to keep it. So again, those are things that we're going to go over in great detail. But in most situations, the earnest money is just a good faith deposit. If you make it all the way to closing, then that earnest money goes towards any expenses, down payments, closing costs, any money that you have to bring to closing, you would bring that much less. Once we go under contract and a lot of people start working really, really hard. Um, if you're doing inspections, I'm helping you set up inspections. We're getting uh, the types of inspections done that you want. The lender is going to really start asking you for more documents, asking you for more questions, asking you to supplement things. The lender is going to talk to you about at the appropriate time, uh, sending out an appraiser. An appraiser is is an independent third party known as an appraiser and they're going out to do an appraisal. So the lender has to know what the house is worth because your loan is going to depend on what that appraiser says the house is worth. So it is an independent third party who's going to give you and the lender a number as to what that house is worth. And then your loan will be based upon a certain percentage of that appraisal amount. So the appraisal is a whole process that we will talk about. It is something that usually happens about halfway between the time you go under contract to the time you get to closing. It usually, 
more or less takes about 30 days from the time you go under contract to the time you close, unless something different has been negotiated for some reason, unless there's a way to close faster, unless the seller wants to delay closing for some reason. But if it's just sort of a quote, typical transaction, you're looking at about 30 days, just so you know. So for planning purposes, we're going to talk about all that. Also for planning purposes, um, you will not have your first mortgage payment the month that you close or the month after. So if you close in June, you will not have your first mortgage payment till August first. So for people trying not to double pay rent and mortgage payments, this is part of the whole planning process that we go through early on. Questions that I ask you, information that you give me in order for us to find, you know, when should you start looking for a house? When would you want to go under contract? When would you have your first mortgage payment? What does that mean for the situation that you have now as far as your living arrangements and what you may be paying as far as a lease and things like that? So again, there's a a whole lot of planning. There's a lot of building a foundation, getting the right information early on so that as we get to all of these steps in the process, we've already talked about a lot of things. You already understand what's coming next. Uh, we've already sort of pre-made decisions as much as possible. And then we're just making adjustments and changes along the way. Also the title company starts to become involved. This is a third party that is doing a title search. They're making sure that the people who own the property actually own it and they own it outright. And if there are any mortgages or liens or any things going on um, with the property that all of those are taken care of either prior to closing or at closing so that you know that when you get that title to the property, you are the outright owner. No one's going to come after you for money or anything that's happened in the past. You're going to have something called a title insurance policy that they are going to issue. That is basically an insurance policy that says you do have good title. You do have good ownership to the property. If anything were to come back from the past that no one knew about that was legitimate or that created an issue, then that title policy is going to be what covers you in case anything happens in order to work out any issues with ownership and to make sure that in the future you're able to sell that property and there are no issues other than things that you have done during the time that you owned it, such as taking out a mortgage or you know something else that you've done that would have to be taken care of before you can sell the house. But it's not because of something that happened in the past before you ever owned it. Okay, so if you do inspections, then once we clear inspections, meaning that everything's okay, if there was anything to be negotiated about repairs or any of that, we've dealt with it, everything's been taken care of, then the appraiser usually goes out. If everything comes back on the appraisal good, then we keep moving forward. The title company is also working with the lender to put together all the documents that will be signed at closing. And most of all, they're putting together all the financial information so that everybody on both sides, the buyer and the seller, know exactly um, what's going on with every single penny of the transaction, who's paying for what, who's bringing what to closing, who's walking away with what at closing. You know, we're double checking and triple checking. Uh, we're all looking at it multiple times. You're going to get something called an Alta statement from the lender. You're going to be getting a closing disclosure, which is going to have information about your loan and any fees and other things that are between you and the lender. Those numbers will end up on that Alta statement. So we're going to be working together just to make sure at the very end that every Everybody's happy with all the financials. Then once we've made it through the whole process and everything is good, we get to closing day. All right, closing day, that is the goal. Closing day is where you go usually to a title company or an office somewhere. If you need to, um, remote notaries can come out to you for some people that are traveling, that are out of state, depending on the circumstances, but documents will get to you with people there who understand them, who are going to explain them to you, walk you through them. You're going to sign your name 14,000 times. So yes, at least 14,000. So get ready, practice up on that signature and dating documents. 
because it takes quite a bit of time. But usually within about 45 minutes to an hour, um, you will be done. Uh, when you are finished and all your questions have been answered, then some point you're going to get keys to your house. So I always tell people, assume you're getting keys to your house the next day, not the day of. Most of the time you get keys the same day, but those are things that we will work out with the seller. It depends on what time everybody closes. It depends on if anybody has a mail away closing, which means one of the parties is actually not physically here, wherever here is, Nashville, surrounding Middle Tennessee area. Um, there are a number of things that we will have already worked out ahead of time. The goal is to get you your keys the same day. But again, those are all things that we will talk about just based upon the circumstances of your specific closing. There are so many things that pretty much happen in every single closing, but of course, everything is unique to everybody because every party is different. Every circumstance is different. Things that are negotiated are different. So I am here to oversee all of that, to lead you through, to make sure you get your questions answered. If I can't answer them, to make sure that you can find the right professionals to answer them, to try to look out for and foresee any issues that may come up so that we can deal with them proactively uh, before they become a big issue. You know, I have a legal background and a financial background, so I'm definitely here to walk you through all the different pieces to make sure you're on the same page with all the different parties in the transaction uh, to help get clarification for you if there's anything that you don't understand along the way as you're talking to the lender, as you're talking to the title company, as you're making decisions, making sure you know that you're talking to third-party experts whenever necessary. And the exciting part is, you know, we're going to get you into your new home. So uh, again, if you have any questions, you can reach out to me. I'm happy to go over this with you individually, answer any questions that you may have. I'm Ann Riley Caldwell, not your ordinary agent. Uh, you can get a hold of me at 615-930-0313. You can go to my website, notyourordinaryagent.com. You can comment on this video. You can DM me on social media. You know how it is. There's a million ways to find people and you can find me. If you like this video, there's also segments where I have broken down a lot of these things in even more detail about the home buying process. There's market updates, there's neighborhood tours, there's all kinds of things with more content coming pretty much on a weekly basis. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to be notified. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, comment, share it. All of that stuff helps me and I greatly appreciate it. Make sure you give me a thumbs up, comment, share it. All of that stuff helps me and I greatly appreciate it.